hello lovely people welcome back to my channel i'm adibing pay and in this video i'm going to be showing you how to achieve this kind of perfect fitting camisole top so it's going to be as neat as what you're seeing in the video and it's going to be as easy as possible so the first thing i'd like you to do if you're coming across my video for the first time is to please smash the subscribe button turn on your notification button like share and leave a comment below for me so the first thing i'm going to be doing is to draft the pattern so i'm going to be working with the basic body pattern and if you're already familiar with this you can skip to the next stage so i'm going to be rolling up a startup line and i'm going to be measuring the sh shoulder to shoulder measurement divided by two i have eight in this case so i'm going to be making a point there on that very point on the startup line which is also the shoulder line i'm going to be coming down by one inch to form my shoulder slope so i'm going to be connecting the two points together just as you can see so i'm going to come to the center front again and i'm going to be marking 3.5 inches inward from the center front so i'm going to be making a slant from that point to the shoulder slope point also from that neckline i'm going to be coming down by three and a half inches so i'm going to be measuring three and a half inches by three and a half inches so i'm going to be using this to form a neckline a round neckline because as you see me doing the video this is absolutely not needed i'm going to eventually cut it out i'm just showing it for illustration sake so i just went ahead and i blended it in to make a curved a round neck just as you see me doing in the video so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to impute my length so i'm going to be starting from my startup line so i'm going to be coming down to the nipple point i made a point there i went to the half length i made a point there and then to the full length and i made a point there so i'm going to be ruling a straight line on those points the next thing i'm going to be doing is to come to that shoulder slope place and i'm going to be imputing my arm or circumference divided by two so in my case i have eight inches so the eight inches is going to be starting from the one inch shoulder slope that marked earlier so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to rule a straight line on that very point so i'm going to be connecting the both points together just as you see me do in the video so let's say we are working with the bust circumference of 36 divided by four is going to give nine so instead of imputing nine i'm just going to make use of eight so i'm also not going to be adding sewing allowance to it depending on how stretchy your fabric is if it is not stretchy leave the actual measurement and add your sewing allowance to it i'm going to be showing you the nature of the fabric eventually so i went ahead and i impute by bust second phase divided by four minus one on the hammer line on the bust line then on the waistline i also divided the waist second phase divided by four minus one on the waistline then on the hip line which is also the hem line i divided by four again then i minus one inch instead of adding sewing allowance i'm not going to be adding any sewing allowance to this pattern and it's basically because i'm working with a really stretchy fabric so adding allowance to it will make it not smart as i want so this is one of the secrets to get a perfect smartness for your stretchy fabric so i came to the shoulder line the hammer line rather then i divided it by two just as you see me doing the video so i'm going to be coming in by half inch and i'm going to be making a curve there so i'm going to be making use of my curve ruler to make a curve to the armhole side then i'm going to be coming up to the shoulder line side with a straight line just as you see me do if you want a detailed video on how to after a basic body pattern it's going to be on this channel also you can just check it out so now i'm going to be proceeding to um manipulating this pattern to get my uh, camisole top uh, pattern out of it so the first thing i'm going to be doing is to determine how deep i want the camisole top to be so i'm going to be working with seven inches so i'm going to be ruling a straight line along that part the next thing i'm going to be doing is to reduce the width of the chest you really don't want your camisole top to be as this wide at the chest part so i'm going to be coming in from this arm own line the initial arm own line i'm going to be coming in by two inches you can make do with three depending on how smart you want the chest line to be you can make it as as much as coming as much as three inches it's actually a best fitting to make it three inches here i measure two but you will see eventually i increase it to three so i came down at the hammer line two by half inch you can make do with one inch you don't really want this to be tied to your hammer you need some space on that part so i'm going to be connecting it like you see me do 
So I'm going to be shaping this center front. You can shape it to whatever you want and you can leave it straight like this. Yes, you can. So I'm coming down by one inch. You can make do with 1.5 to depending on how deep you want it to be. But be careful not to get to the uh, bust point because if you make it too deep, it's going to be showing a lot. So if you want it like that as well, you can leave it like that. So I'm going to be coming down by one inch and I'm going to be using my curve ruler to make a curve there. Okay, at this M line, I came up by half of an inch. Then I divided what I have at the, as the hip circumference by two, just as you see me doing in the video. Then I'm going to be making a point there. So I'm going to be blending the two points together to get a curve at that side. You can come up by as much as one inch, depending on how curvy you want that side part to be. Then I'm going to proceed to hard sewing allowance. So whatever work for you, you can work with. So here I'm going to be adding one inch sewing allowance all around. Then I'm going to be marking it out, just as you see me do. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to mark out the part that I'm not going to be needing. I'm going to have to be cutting out from this upper part. So I'm going to be ruling everything I'm not going to be needing out, just as you see me do in the video. So the next thing I did was to cut the pattern out. So I'm going to be working with a lycra fabric and I'm going to be showing how stretchy it is. This fabric really stretches. It stretches vertically and horizontally. Any side you turn to stretches equally. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to fold it. So I want you to know that when you're working with a stretchy fabric like this, as stretchy as this, you don't need to add a sewing allowance to it, especially if you want a smart outcome. And most importantly, I recommend you remove at least one in your measurement, but be sure that your fabric stretches this much before reducing from your measurement. It is for you not to have a towel, a, a, a resource you can't even put on. So I'm going to be folding it into two, then into two again, meaning I'm going to be folding it in four folds. So I'm going to be placing my pattern on it. Ensure that the center front and the center back is the part that is enclosed, not the part that has slit already. So that part that is enclosed close also on the pattern is going to be going to the side that is enclosed on the fabric so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to place the pattern on it in a perfect manner ensuring that none is falling out of it so i'm going to be cutting it out but if you encounter issues in cutting it out maybe it's not staying the pattern is not staying you can just pin it down you know the nature of this fabric i'm working with as well is stretchy and slippery so i'll just pin it down then i'll cut it out so after cutting it out, I removed the pin that was holding it down. Then this is what I have. So the next thing I'm going to be doing, like I said earlier, I'm going to be removing one inch from this edge again, making three inches all together that I came in with. So if you want to leave it like this, it's okay, but you are going to eventually be having a little zaggy space at the chest line and you don't really like it. So I recommend you cut more out of the neckline. So it's going to be three inches coming in from the shoulder uh, from the arm hole line so just as i explained earlier so this is more perfect so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to flip it open this is what i have so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to proceed to the sewing then i'm going to show you a perfect way to fix your strap on the camisole so i'm going to the first thing to do is to sew these tights you can use a straight sewing machine but i'm going to be using the weaving machine because i'm working with a stretchy fabric making use of a straight sewing machine may eventually uh, rip off so i and i want it to last longer so the next thing i'm going to ensure why weaving is that none is left out especially the one beneath i had it equal and i ensure that both the one on top and beneath are head with my weaving machine so i'm going to be working with a four thread overlocking machine so i'm going to be weaving both sides so i proceeded to weave both sides so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to sew my strap to the bodies of the camisole so i'm going to be working with a bias tape of one inch so when it's folded together like this it's going to be half of an inch because quarter of an inch on both edge has been folded inward so when opened it's going to be one inch but when left as it came from 
production is going to be half inch if you measure it but just flipping the both side open will make it one inch so i'm going to be sewing by the quarter of an inch that has been folded inside i'm going to be flipping it open and i'm going to be aligning it to the edge of my neckline and i'm going to be sewing on the line created from production of the bias tape you're going to be seeing it so you'll be able to relate better with it so i'm going to be aligning it ensuring that i place the bias tape on the wrong side of my fabric of my uh, camisole top so i'm going to be aligning the edge together just as you see me do and i'm going to ensure that i sew on the line created from production of the bias tape so i'm going to be sewing it just as you see me do so i'm going to be starting from the wrong side to the right side or from the inside part to the outside part so it is very important that you don't sew beyond that line if you sew beyond that line it's going to be very difficult to do the next step so i'm going to ensure that i do not lose the shape i have at this neckline while stitching it so once i get to the end i'm going to i'm going to be locking my stitch as you can see i'm sewing from the wrong side then i'm going to be flipping it to the right side and i'm going to be top stitching on this this is just to ensure you have a neat finishing you can as well sew from outside in the choice is yours this method just give a perfect fitting uh finishing without stress so i'm going to be top stitching flipping it just as you see me do and i'm going to be top stitching very close to the tip ensuring that what i'm flipping covers my initial stitch watch closely you'll get what i mean by that ensuring that it covers my initial stitch a little so i'm going to ensure that i guide it so much that it's not falling off the edge it's balancing on the head So this is what i have this is what it looks like very neat then i'm going to be trimming off the ss just as you see me do i'm going to be trimming off the ss then i'm going to be doing the other neckline so i'm going to be repeating the same process for the other neckline so i want you to also watch close So I want you to watch closely. So I'm not going to be uh, removing this second part from the video. I'm going to be leaving it so as for you to get a better view of it again. So I'm going to be sewing on the line, on the quarter of an inch line created on the bias to fold it in. So I'm going to be sewing on it. Ensure you don't sew beyond it. Sew exactly on it. Then I'm going to be uh, locking my stitch just as you see me do. Then I'm going to be cutting it out not too close to the neckline. Then I'm going to be flipping it open. I'm going to be flipping it to the right side. I stitch from the wrong side. So I'm going to be flipping it to the right side. This is very important. Like I said, a neat finishing. So I'm going to ensure that I play, I fold, flip it to the right side, ensuring that it covers my initial stitch a little, just a little, like eight of an inch. Then I'm going to be top stitching on it at the edge of the bias, ensuring that it did not fall off ensure that it did not fall off so i'm going to be top stitching on it just as you see me
So I want you to take your time to get a neat finishing. That's that's what camisole top is all about, neat finishing. So it looks more of a regimen. So here is the outcome also for the other side. So this is what I have for the other side too. This is the right, this is the wrong side. And you see how neat and perfect it is. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to work on the ammo side. Then it's going to be this ammo side that we extend to make our strap. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting from where my side. I'm going to be starting from where my side seam is, ensuring that the edge of the bias tape is uh, smooth. So you might want to cut whatever is not so balanced at that part. So I'm going to be marking one inch on the bias tape. So that is where I'm going to be starting my stitch from one inch away from the edge. So I'm going to be placing it on my center and my side seam. Just as you see, the marked out on the bias is going to be aligning with my side seam. So I'm going to be sewing from the wrong side to the right side, just as we did for the neckline or the chest line. So I'm going to be stitching on the quarter of an inch that is already created on the bias tape. So I'm going to be stitching it through. One important thing also to note while working with a stretchy fabric is you are not to stretch the fabric. It will lose shape. You are just to guide. If possible, push it in. So, so has for you not to lose the shape you had already cut out. So after sewing it to that uh, edge of the neckline, I'm going to re do a reverse stitch on it just to secure that part. You know, that part is going to really be holding the waist of the bust. So I went ahead and I measured 14 inches on the bias. So this is going to be the strap itself for the camisole top. So from that 14 inches, I marked it on the bias tape and I'm going to be continue on the neckline. Ensure that your bias is not uh, forming a knot or turning to form a confusion eventually. Lay it flat just as you see me do and ensure you continue from the backside of the uh, chest line. So just as you see me do, I'm going to continue from the other backside ensure that your bias tape is not missing its way and is not forming a I'm going to be stitching from that back side and I'm going to be doing the reverse stitch on it just to secure that part also. And I'm going to be stitching it all the way down to the side seam. So when I have about one inch left, I'm going to be marking it so as to show. So I'm going to be marking one inch from where my first seam starts. So I'm going to be marking one inch out like you see me do. And I'm going to be stopping where the one inch mark is. So I went ahead and I cut my SS thread. Then so I'm going to be measuring one inch on this side also. And I'm going to be marking it out. Then I'm going to be cutting out the SS that I So I'm going to be placing it on top of each other in a times manner. So I'm going to be making a slant line across from one edge to the other. So that line is going to be what will guide me to stitch it together. You cannot just hold one edge to one edge and so it's going to be bulky. This is actually how bias tape is joined together to have a neat finishing so i'm going to be stitching it just just as the mark out is that's how i'm going to be guided to stitch it together So 
So after doing that, I'm going to be cutting the excess that I have away from that part. So, so on the bias, you can iron that part soon, open it and iron it. I just open it and I press it with my, with the tip of my finger and it's lay flat at least for, for me to proceed the work. So if you have the space and time, you can just iron it, open it and iron it. So if you do it right, the fabric itself, the camisole top itself, the space there should be enough to sew the bias together. If you are having excess fabric, that means you did not follow well. So I recommend you follow again, you go through it again. You shouldn't have excess, it should just be equal. So this is what I have. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to flip it from the inside out. Then I'm going to be ensuring that I cover my first stitch a little. Then I'm going to be top stitching on the edge, ensuring that I did not fall off from the line, from the edge to the fabric itself. So I cut all excess from that neckline part. It is very important. That part can make your work not neat because it's going to be bulging and bulky. It's going to be bulky at that point part and the bias may not be able to cover it easily so i'm going to be cutting all excess from that part and from the side seam too so starting from the hammo side also i'm going to be top stitching it all around them back to the hammo side so take your time with this remember this is the part that will show that will really determine if you have a neat work or not so i'll recommend you really watch through take your time with it then you'll have your result all So along the stripe line, I'm going to be folding it together just as you see me do. Then I'm going to be top stitching on it. Ensure that it's equal and sew on the head. And while sewing, ensure that the damp part is held together so that you will not have a situation whereby the damp part is not stitched along with the upper part. So this is what I have, so neat and so perfect. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to follow the same procedure for the other side and I'm going to be showing you the outcome. So if you follow the steps well, you should get this result. It should be as neat as this. And if you want a wider bias tape size, you can create one yourself. I'm going to be leaving a video after this on how to make a bias tape by yourself using virtually any fabric so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to fold the damp part by one inch so i'm going to be either using a sewing machine straight sewing machine or i'm going to be using a hemming gun to hem the damp part the reason why i won't recommend a straight sewing machine for a stretchy fabric of this nature is because we have already reduced i had already reduced the measurements of the fabric itself so as to have a perfect fit so if i use a straight stitch wearing it will be difficult and forcing it to wear we mean stretching out the thread and the thread is going to rip off so it's better you use this type of emigum to hold this damp part or you use uh, 